what is food safe pottery? How do you make your pottery food safe? And is there such a thing as a food safe glaze? These are some of the questions that comes up most often in the many pottery Facebook groups. And even though the questions may sound simple, the answers is definitely not. So in this video, I will try and dig deeper into that whole question of food safety and pottery. I know it's a controversial subject. Some of you may not agree completely with me, but I'll try to be as objective and realistic as possible. So welcome. From a legal point of view, what is considered food safe pottery is not a universal or global standard. Some of us may wish it was, and some people may think that their standards are global, but it's not. So when you go to these pottery groups, there's a lot of course Americans, a lot of Brits, French people, they will probably tell you what is legally food safe pottery from their point of view, from where they live but you cannot assume that it's going to be the same where you live. I live in Denmark, and in Denmark, you can have your, your pottery tested uh, for food safety. And uh, in Denmark, there are some requirements that I think is kind of stupid because they require the pottery to be glazed and fired to above a thousand degrees Celsius. That sort of rules out all earthenware, uh, and of course, any pit fired, pottery or, or raku pottery that is typically not fired to temperatures above a thousand degrees Celsius. That's sort of stupid. I mean, they used raku for centuries in Japan. <laughs> I think they survived. Uh, earthenware is also traditionally uh, what we've been using for bowls and plates and stuff, even in Denmark. Uh, but that's not legally considered food safe pottery. But, and there's a big but, I don't know exactly how this works in all jurisdictions in all countries in the world. But in Denmark, there's like a, like a threshold. So if you sell below that threshold, which is typically what a ceramic artists are doing, and I think in Denmark it's 5,000 uh, pots a year, uh, then you're not required to have your pots tested for food safety. I don't know what that threshold is in your country. There may not be a threshold, but that's something you have to check out. But typically, most ceramic artists don't test their pots for food safety in like the official way in a laboratory. And the reason for that <laughs> is it's bloody expensive. I think in Denmark it costs about 2,500 to 2,800 kroner, uh, which is like three, four hundred dollars. And what you have to understand is that if you do a test, it's going to be of one specific design with one specific uh, texture, one specific glaze, one specific fire schedule. If you do the same pot with a different glaze, if you do the same glaze, the same clay, but in a different design, you have to test it again. That's okay if you do production pottery. So if you, if you design a cup, fire it a certain way with a certain glaze, and you make thousands of it, then it makes sense to pay you know, whatever you have to pay to get it approved. But if you're a ceramic artist and you're doing unique pieces, or you only do very limited amounts of more or less the same pieces, and you don't document every single firing, or maybe you, you have different glazes, maybe you do a cup design, but you have 10 different glazes, that means you have to do 10 different uh, testings uh, <laughs> to get it officially approved. That is so expensive that no ceramic artist I know of anywhere in the world are actually doing that. So moving into the not legal aspects of food safety, there are a number of different things that could make your pot less food safe. The first one is if there the surface of the clay. If there's a lot of crackles, let, let's assume this was uh, the inside of a bowl. Of course, if you have a surface like this, Bacteria can hide in there, and it can be impossible to uh, remove them even if you clean uh, the pot. Um, so if you're using a texture like this, if you're using crackle glazes, if you by accident uh, crackle your, your, your glaze, if there's any little you know, cracks where bacteria can hide, that is something that would lower the food safety of your pot. So that's one part of it, the surface of it. There could also be elements in your clay. I mean, clay can be anything, and you can mix up your clay with whatever you want. You could mix in lead 
I don't know why you would do that, but you could mix in all kinds of toxic elements in the clay, and maybe that would leach into your food. That could make it uh, food unsafe. So that's it, the, the clay and the design and, and, and the texture of it. On the other hand, a bowl like this, uh, in, in a clean, very nice, high quality porcelain, it's got a very clean surface. There's no way the bacteria can hide in here. That's uh, probably going to be food safe. So that was the clay and the texture. So the next question is glazes. We covered the clay. There can be elements in the clay that makes it not uh, suitable for food. The surface, if it's textured, it's not good for food. But now let's talk about the, the glaze. Because, of course, it's obvious that a clear glaze like this on my porcelain is most likely food safe. On the other end, maybe this glaze that is a lot more colorful may not be food safe. So a lot of people ask in the forums, is this glaze food safe? And the thing is, there's no such thing as a food safe glaze. You may see on some pottery stalls that you can see glazes that are marked as not food safe. And that may be correct, because there might be things in the glaze. Maybe it's a crackling glaze that makes it unsafe. Uh, maybe there are elements that can leach into uh, your food that makes it unsafe. But you don't see any serious pottery stalls labeling any glaze as food safe, because it is simply not possible. And why is that? Well, I'm actually going to read out something um, because on Scarver.com's uh, website, Scarver.com is, is a big party supplier in Europe. It's uh, out of uh, Northern Ireland. Um, and they actually put a statement on their site about food safety and glazing that I think is one of the most precise uh, statements I've seen on this. So even though I hate to read out text, and especially other people's text in my videos, I do think this is very precise. So bear with me for a second, and I will read it. So the headline is, is this glaze food safe? And the answer is, this is the question above any other we are asked most frequently, and it's something that people get very confused about. First and foremost, the, the term food safe cannot technically be applied to a glaze as supplied. That's basically what I just said. The final fired piece may be considered food safe. However, this is relied on such a massive variety of factors outside of any supplier's control that there's no definitive answer. The clay body, form, surface texture, firing schedule, oxide addition, <clears throat> and many other variables all need to be considered Glaze with matte surface, cracker glaze, and other non-glossy effects glazes should all be avoided for functional wear due to the, possibi due to the possibility of the surface uh, harboring bacteria. In general, provided glazes are fired to maturity on a suitable clay body, there should be no issue. However, the only guaranteed way to have a piece deemed food safe is to have it tested by a certified ceramic testing laboratory. In the UK, this is done by Lou Cedion and can be contacted by clicking this link. I will provide a link here for you if uh, you're in the UK. And of course, these laboratories are different in each country, so you have to look up what laboratory, what authority will do the food testing. But they're really summarizing some of what we talked about with the clay and the surface and stuff and the glazing. There is no such thing as a food safe glaze because it all depends on what clay you put it on, uh, what you add to it, if you add some oxides, and how you fire it. So you could have a glaze that could be food safe, but then the application makes it not food safe. So again, you can have glazes that are definitely not food safe, but you can never have a glaze that is by default, food safe. So what about pots that have not been glazed? <laughs> this is also made in a very fine uh, porcelain, all three uh, black men, uh, and it's been fired to um, vitrification, so 1300 degrees Celsius. So all the pores should be closed, so there shouldn't be any, any small you know, pores in, in, in the clay that, where bacteria can hide. 
I did, however, color the clay in two different uh, colors, but I used stains. And stains usually don't leach and create on food safety issues. Um, so I would be pretty sure that it is food safe. I also sealed it uh, with liquid quartz, which is a wonderful product, a nanoparticle product that goes into whatever pores that should be left, if there is any, and close them so, um, so food uh, bacteria cannot uh, harbor there. That's a product that is, by the way, uh, approved for food in uh, Australia and Europe. I would feel confident that this is food safe. On the other hand, you also have bowls like uh, this that are doing pit fire. Wonderful, uh, they look so nice. This is also done in a different kind of, of, um, of porcelain, but still a porcelain. So the clay itself is good. There's no textures in it, so there's no you know, visible way that bacteria could, could uh, hide, but there's no glaze on it. I did use the liquid quartz, so the liquid quartz will seal off any, any uh, holes, porosity that might be in the clay. And this has not been fired to the same high degree as the other porcelain because I used it in, in, in pit fire. I only bis fired it to 950 degrees Celsius, then, then pit fired it, which is probably 800, 900 degrees or something. So this is probably not fully vitrified. But the small porous holes is close with, uh, with uh, the liquid quartz. However, the liquid quartz is not a glaze, so it's not a, a, a layer of glass that covers and protects uh, uh, um, the, 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 the food from whatever is in the clay or in the colors. This has been done using um, a combination of organic materials and, and some metals. Um, I don't think this makes it very unsafe. <laughs> um, however, when I sell this type of bowl to my uh, clients, I tell them that I cannot guarantee that it's food safe. I think that's the, 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 the responsible <laughs> way of dealing with this. Um, on the other hand, personally, I wouldn't be afraid of using it for things like uh, bananas or oranges that have peels on. So you don't have the food directly touching um, the surface of this pot. I wouldn't be afraid of that. However, I wouldn't put a salad in there or, 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 or pickles, you know, something with a high level of acid uh, as there might be things that can ex be extracted from this bowl. But for, for something like this or, 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 or candy that is wrapped up in paper, I wouldn't be afraid of that. But of course, I can't be sure. I'm pretty sure that if I send this to the laboratory in Denmark and ask them to test it for food safety, and then they will ask me to what degree I fired it. And I can't even be sure because I can't measure exact temperature in, in an open fire. But it's definitely not above 1,000 degrees Celsius, and there's no glaze on it. So this would officially not be approved. So how serious should you be about food safety? How much should you test? Should you send it to laboratories for approval? Well, by the end of the day, it's up to you and it's up to the laws that are governing this area uh, where you live. Um, I don't. I do, of course, care for my customers. I don't want to make anyone sick. So I do, of course, want to make pottery that uh, is it is. If it is something that you will use for food, which a lot of my pottery is, uh, then, of course, I want to be sure if, if it's a, a, a big vase like this one, it's not going to be used for food. So for this one, I go crazy with oxides and all kinds of funky stuff that would probably not be very good for food. But then again, you're not going to put food in this. So, yeah, I do think that you should take food safety um, serious, but I don't think you should be obsessed about it. Reality is that very little glazes today are actually very food on safety. And if you exclude uh, the kind of uh, problems that I talked about in the beginning, of course, with crackle surfaces where bacteria can harbor and um, strong uh, colorants uh, that may leach, uh, then I think you're on the safe side. But a ceramic artist, I want to be honest with my clients, so I tell them, I haven't tested this. I think this is completely food safe. I would be confident about that. I'm also pretty sure about this. But when it comes to some of the other uh, stronger colorants, 
I can't be 100% sure. Even if I ran an acid test, that's still not a laboratory test. You know, it, it, I can't be 100% sure. So at least honest, honesty to me is, uh, is an important thing. But what is your opinion about food safety? Please leave a comment down there. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you totally disagree, which is also fine. I would uh, invite <laughs> for discussion here. Anyway, there was just a small opinionated um, video this time. I will have a new video uh, every Sunday. Uh, I typically release it as a premiere uh, Sunday at 5 p.m. Central European time. So if you're here about that time, you can follow the premiere and have a live chat with uh, me and the others watching it. Please, uh, if you like this channel, please uh, engage, subscribe, press that little bell button, then you will be notified about uh, new videos. And uh, I hope to see you soon again. Yeah.